In this session, we're going to look at using PHP MyAdmin to create ourselves a MySQL database. So the first thing we need to do is actually go on to PHP MyAdmin. You know, remember from a previous tutorial, we saved the information from our start screen. And down the bottom here, you can actually see that there is a link to PHP MyAdmin. So if you have yours still open, you can click on that or just copy that. Or if you don't, you should be able to easily go to your stack by clicking on play. And then you should be able to put in the forward slash PHP my admin. Now, once you've gone to PHP my admin, this is a GUI interface into MySQL. This may be a bit technical at the moment, but it's here to help us and to speed up the process. We need to be able to log in. Now, to log in, we need to use root as the username. And currently, there's no password set to the default database. So at this point of time, I would leave it as root, and it will make your dynamic website programming a lot easier if you do leave it as root. So once you've come in through the root password, you'll notice that this is the basic dashboard. If you are going to put your web server live onto the internet, I would suggest that you change the root password for security reasons. To change your password for a database, just click on change password here. But we're going to leave ours as a default password. And what the first thing we're going to do is actually establish a new database. So we're going to click on databases. In here, we can actually create a database. We want to create a database for usernames and passwords. And we're going to call this LDAP. Okay, and now this is LDAP. And what's going to hold is a username and a password. And we can actually click on create. Now, once we create the database, you can actually see that it's made here. We can actually have lots of databases stored on our server stack. So in this case, we're just going to be working with LDAP. So I just clicked on LDAP and we can now create a table. Now a table is going to be where all the information is going to be stored. So we're going to store it on TBL and we're going to have users. It's going to ask us the number of columns that we want in our database. So these are the number of fields. We're only going to have username and password. So we only need two at this point in time. And click on go. Now it creates our two fields and now we need to give it some information. So we're going to have user and we're going to have name and the this one's going to be not an integer but a bar char so it can be any characters or numbers we can actually set a value length so we're going to have a maximum of 20 we can also set this as an index and say that it is unique or primary we're just going to use primary at this point of time therefore no one can have the same username on the end here you've also got auto increment but because we're doing username and rather than customer ID, we won't need that at the moment. And you can actually place a comment in here. So you can actually put username of person. Now you could actually um, define it as an email address or things such as that for their username. And this way you can actually put some properties in here and let the programmers know what the structure is. The other one we wanted was password. So we're going to have a user password. This again is going to be varchar. We need to set the length of the varchar, so we'll set that to 20 again. Now we know that passwords may be duplicated between users, and that's okay. So we don't want to set this to be primary and unique, but we want to be able to save this. And this will now create those two fields with inside the table. So once we've done that, we can actually browse the table. And you notice it doesn't actually return anything at the moment because there's no records currently in our database. But we can go have a look at our structure of our database. And you'll notice that it'll actually tell us what the field names are that are in there. If we need to change them, we can actually make some changes here or we can get rid of them. We can tell what's primary, etc. So there's some values here that we can adjust to the table. It is not a good idea to make these adjustments after you put data within your table. So now what we want to do is actually add some information to our table. So we're going to click on insert. And this opens up a little form for us and we can actually come in and go enter a username. So we're going to go across to value and we're going to enter in say test and the password also is going to be test and click on go. So then we can click on go and you know it's because it's already been inserted and we've already got a test test we'll end up with an error. So once we know that that's been inserted we can then go to browse and you can see down the bottom here in username and password, 
that test and test exists. So let's go insert another one. So this time I'm going to insert LM and LM and I can click on go and it's been inserted so click on browse and in our list now you can actually see LM LM and test and test. So we're just going to put one more in there so we'll just go insert and I'm going to put L Marsden and the password's going to be www and click on go and click browse and you can see that the, that information has been entered into our table. So we now will be able to go out and establish a PHP connection to our website and authenticate and see if these users are allowed to access the database. In the meantime, this has been a quick way to establish a database, establish a table and some fields and enter in some data.